let's I guess let's talk about uh, what you guys are doing uh, on the Tron side in just a moment. But your reaction to the latest on on Sam Bankman Fried? I think we had Yatsio of Animoca Brands last week, and he said the the industry, and I'm paraphrasing, is cheering the arrest of Sam Bankman Fried because this separates him from the industry. Do you feel the same way? Yes. Uh, I believe, first of all, the fall of FTX um, probably like marks on the end of the crypto uh, bearish market. Uh, I believe this is like the last bad news we have. Um, so I think right now the industry uh, needs united together um, to show the strength and also to restore the confidence of the customer uh, to not only centralized exchange, but also um, to the whole industry. Just, I've just got some uh, news coming from the New York Times about uh, Bankman Fried. They're teasing talks apparently with U.S. prosecutors over a bail here. They're looking for a bail deal. This is one of the reasons we now outlined why he perhaps decided to go back and not fight extradition here. But that's just coming through right now. But uh, give us a sense, though, Justin, because I think it was the 10th of November when you had uh, said that you were willing to actually help out FTX. You were uh, prepared to cover some of the losses once due diligence was done. Now, what did you find in that due diligence is, is going to be key? Yes. Um, so basically, I think Sam uh, completely lost of all the control of FTX after he signed on the Chapter 3. So there is not like much left for uh, due diligence, especially after uh, the bankruptcy construction, because um, majority of the uh, control rights uh, goes to John Ray. Uh, the current CEO. So, uh, I, but still, uh, I will be. I'm kind of like surprised, you know. Um, Sam uh, uh, will be exiled to uh, United States uh, for the trial uh, um, in this uh, short period of time. Justin, I'm, I'm curious. Have you been in contact with Sam recently? Uh, recently, no. Of course. Oh, okay, okay. Just, just, just thought of asking. Now, now the, I mean, the, the other sort of parallel story here, and you, you probably know about this. There are new ETFs on on crypto that were launched in in, in Hong Kong. Uh, yes. I think it was it was late last week, right? It was CSUP Asset Management, yeah. and you know, a lot of people were pointing to that avenue of investment as perhaps not completely erase, uh, replacing, but as a new avenue for investors to get exposure to crypto, because well, obviously the optics are it's safer in these traditional exchanges. How would you respond to that? Yes, uh, I definitely believe this is a big move uh, for the whole crypto industry, uh, because um, I was trading crypto in Hong Kong, uh, I think back to uh, 2000, uh, and 20. So at that time, uh, there even not uh, um, basically. I, I think uh, at that time, Hong Kong regulators are not even comfortable to let us trade crypto uh, on uh, on grid scale products. So basically, at that time, we don't have um, ETF at all. So um, not um, U.S. crypto ETF, but Hong Kong ETF either. Uh, only grayscale product. But at that time, uh, Hong Kong regulators feel Bitcoin, Ethereum is very sensitive. Um, they want to be aligned with a Chinese government regulation. So, um, so they don't even want to ask to trade grayscale uh, crypto at that time. But right now, I, I think everything changed dramatically in the past uh, two years, I will say. Hong Kong right now, I think, is in a very uh, embrace crypto mode. So, so that's why I, I think not only they launch crypto ETF today, uh, and they welcome like every exchange to uh, establish their Hong Kong branch. I think not only this marks uh, basically the open up of crypto in Hong Kong, but I, th I think it's also. Um, open up the overall crypto policies in China. Uh, I, I believe um, 
the next bull market um, will depend it on, on Chinese market, which we have seen in the past, you know, um, in 2012 and to 2017. Uh, actually, two bull markets in 13 and in 17 uh, is decided by um, Chinese currency and also Chinese markets. At that time, right. um, like 90% of the volume is uh, depended by, by Asian market at least. Well, Justin, I'd like to ask you about that because do you think regulators in Hong Kong approving Embrace the embrace of crypto. Do you think that's something that might indicate a change of heart from regulators on the mainland? Yes, definitely. I think right now uh, Chinese regulators sees Hong Kong basically like uh, a Shenzhen. Um, so before, I think for uh, most of the policy makers, uh, they uh, see Shenzhen as an experiment zone. So if they want to try anything, they will let like Shenzhen do it first. Um, but right now, I, I think Hong Kong definitely have a better position compared to Shenzhen because it has a, a way better um, uh, uh, status uh, and, and also infrastructure of financial institution. So that's why I think right now they are using uh, Hong Kong as an experiment place. Um, so they can see all the feedbacks, all the results uh, once they adopt like crypto. Um, so, so that's why uh, I'm super uh, bullish and also uh, looking forward to seeing uh, the result of like all the Hong Kong uh, crypto policy.